everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gym Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, we got a lot to go over. We got to talk about what if, the finale. We got to talk about this Venom thing because I, I don't know about you, but I'm confused. Um, I, I was also confused, not confused, but you know, I have some questions about how they're going to explain what caused this uh, scenario where he ends up, spoiler alert, in somewhere else. Um, and then you see Tom Holland. Uh, what's a little, I mean, we spoke about it previously in, in another show, but we didn't get into it, which is the Hawkeye trailer. We'll talk about that. Um, we'll also talk about the rumors about Daredevil season four. Um, We'll also get into Joker 2, Joaquin Phoenix has some thoughts about it. We, we think that uh, he's not going to do it. Um, we're also going to get into Affleck talking about his uh, joyful experience, uh, re, in, 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 redoing you know, his Batman role for the Flash movie. And he throws a little bit of... Uh, I'm pretty sure Ray Fisher s- smiled, <laughs> you know, but hey, that that uh, drama is over. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. What if Brian? I didn't enjoy this episode as much as I did episode eight. Episode eight. If you want to know how I feel about episode eight, go watch the last episode that we did. Um, what did you think about this um, finale? I thought it was decent, but I didn't think it was, you know, is similar. It, and not to say, listen, Endgame was fantastic, but I loved Infinity War better. Um, what did you think about this last episode? I agree with you. I think eight episode eight is better than episode nine. I actually felt a little more. I didn't. It, I think the drop off from an Infinity War to Endgame, if there is a drop off, is small. I actually thought this was more comparable to way to Wandavision in the sense of Wandavision's best episode is the second to last episode. Yeah, yeah. And there's a little bit of the Marvel formula yeah. in the finale. I had a little bit of that feeling. I, I don't know what you felt, but like we've been building to this. Is he or is he not going to? Like, what's the watcher going to do? That's clearly what episode eight left us with. Yeah. And he makes the heroic choice, right? He breaks his vow and mm-hmm. spoiler alert. And he basically unleashes multiversal Avengers. That's basically what he does in, in this episode. Yeah. And so it's one of those where I kind of watched the episode. I didn't love the execution. Like I felt like eight looked better. The the, the twists were cooler. Yeah. But like nine had that Marvel fingerprints of like, what am I seeing here? Am I seeing something that is going to be carried forward into what if season two? Am I seeing a preview of something that might be on the big screen? in the MCU as we get into the multiverse. I think my positivity around the episode is more along those lines. It's the questions I'm feeling about what did we actually get signals about with where they took this versus Mm -hmm. this being like the Loki finale, which is a great episode of standalone television. So I don't know, what are your thoughts on this? Are we now seeing like something Marvel is test driving to then put into live action? I don't know if they're test driving. I mean, this is this goes back to the question I asked you before, whether you would want this what if series to be, you know, standalone, because it seems because where does this last episode lead off? Lead us off to in the future. Right. Everybody's in different places. Uh, 
you know, Romanoff is is in a universe where she was taking away, taken away. I think that was referring to Romanoff, you know, sacrificing herself, right? Yeah. Does it lead to her comeback? I mean, that's on the table now that they're being friendly again, <laughs> right? Um, but again, I would I would have much rather because the thing is, if you tell these storylines that they're, they're they're somewhat connected, to finish it up in a half hour, and it, and this one seemed like they were doing the same thing that would they were doing in episode one. In episode two, right? These, these, you know, it just felt had that same feeling on a bigger scale. Yeah, so and I feel it, like it, even the post credit scene kind of seemed like it was almost being forced to bring the season around yeah. back, to, back to Agent Carter mm -hmm. as Captain Carter. I'm like, I don't know that this show needed that. Like, I yeah. don't know that I needed a bow tied up on, on her storyline. Um, so I, I kind of agree with you on that. That's what I mean. The execute, there's a little bit of a force it felt like in this episode, but that's what made me wonder, like, is it Marvel kind of saying, hey, you gotta, you gotta set the chessboard like this for mm -hmm. not just this show, but maybe some other things we want to do. Yeah. What if it's a difficult, I mean, I think they would have been better off doing it, these self-contained stories. I think they would have been better off probably tell her, a little bit more than a half hour to really give us a full story instead of a quick half hour um, situation. Which could change. That could be a season one decision. Maybe Disney was like, hey, we're not comfortable rolling with an animated show out of the gate at 45 to 60 minutes because that is certainly unusual. Yeah. Maybe they're like, hey, let's give the people what they're used to and then we can always adjust it up later. Yeah, I, I think they're going to be experimenting with that. Um... So my simplistic take on, on What If as a show, it, season, uh, episode nine actually encapsulated something I felt. Season, episode eight should have been the finale. Yeah. Straight up. If the yeah. season ends with him, with, with the evil Doctor Strange in the middle of nowhere after that fight, I'm yeah. Happy. Oh, that's yeah. where it should have ended. In a weird yeah. way, like episode nine felt like, why did you make like why did you have to make this right for the season one? In the same way that I feel like episodes one and two kind of felt like, why why were these in the lead off position? This, this show in my mind was like the editing. Honestly, even though it's a show that you can go in infinite directions, I almost mm. feel like this show would have been better as six episodes instead of nine. Like start it with maybe that, not the strange episode, either start it with the strange episode or start it with the who's assassinating the Avengers episode, cut yeah. episodes one and two, and then cut yeah. episode nine, and then just go with sort of episodes three through eight. I don't know. Show might have been better. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a difficult thing. I mean, I would have, again, I, I think I would have been better off watching it as a self-contained episode and so the, the the connectedness part of this this is where i sort of you know i'm all about the connected universe that mcu has built in live action i love that mm -hmm. and this it doesn't work so much no i agree and to go that route in terms of connectedness again and then telling us the story in half hour increments it just doesn't work. You'll get these one-offs like episode four, episode eight. You know, I I, I kind of like the, the the Killmonger episode. Even yeah, though that when he, yeah, yeah, even though when, when when he said, "Yo," when he said Wakanda forever and screamed that that was so lackluster. That was I was I was like, really, yo? They they let him get away with that. But anyway, I just think they need to rethink this whole what if uh series yeah no i i tend to agree with you and i i think like i said it, it's this is a show where i said i think it lends itself more to you can do the occasional two-parter mm -hmm. 
but have the two-parter be self-contained, maybe make it an hour long instead of, but, but like, I think we're okay with, I think we're okay with tangents. The whole idea of this show is tangents. So I think yes. we're okay with like, hey, let's check in with this storyline. Or now we got, you know, now that like, okay, Shang-Chi is active and we're going to have Eternals active. Let's check in with um, Icarus and like, you know, I think we're fine with that. I agree with you. I think you could do these, like, if you want to do, like, okay, the finale, you're going to do a two-parter into the end of the season, or you want to cliffhang the season finale into the premiere. Okay, yeah. that's pretty standard TV stuff. But, like, yeah, yeah I, I don't think this show benefits if you make it, like, eight or nine episodes that are interconnected in sequential mm -hmm. order. I think that'll limit the show, and you don't yeah. want to limit the show. Yeah. So, yeah. overall, like, I don't know. I mean, sadly, despite after my bold prediction of this in number one spot, <laughs> It's probably at the bottom of the wow four so far. Got. Well, okay. yeah, yeah, I would, I would I agree with that. Debate, like, did episode four and eight alone did that get no. it above Falcon and Winter no. Soldier? And I'm like, I can't do it. No. So it's probably the least of the four shows so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta redo this this whole thing again and see where we 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 placed it and where we think of it now so 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 that'll be interesting to uh, show well, right about now i guess i'm getting in the mode of like she hulk is going to be the best show that's been ever been made because <laughs> we're so out on that show and we've been so wrong yo yeah i know right yeah we've been super wrong but uh yeah let us know in the comment section below what you guys thought of the last, the last episode of what if episode nine um, and do you agree with us with how this uh, uh, this approach that they've taken is sort of um, making it a little bit too um, is it too much? I would ask Brian, is it is, what they're giving us is too much in in so little time? that they have in these half hour shows that they give us is it, is it too much in terms of it connecting this and all the stuff that's going around i would again i would much rather watch the watcher telling us a story about a situation instead well, again, of this whole thing i think the mistake is anytime they're taking a two to two and a half hour film and they're trying to collect condense it to a half yeah. hour it's impossible impossible yeah. When they, the episodes that have worked have literally just plucked a moment in time, a character, yeah. literally like a, a minute, and then blown that up into an episode. Those episodes work. It's yeah. when they go the other way that they get in trouble. So, yeah. Yeah. So let us know in the comments below what you guys think. Next up, Venom. All right. Let's talk about it. I went to see this movie on Sunday with my son been bugging me all week about wanting to see this film i've been wanting to see this film i kind of enjoyed the first film because when i saw the film it sort of the venom character reminded me of venom so i was okay with that yeah um tom hardy's performance you know tom hardy you know i have nothing bad to say about his acting chops he's i think he's one of the best out there um there was i don't know if you ever got a chance to see that show that he did on fx called taboo no i've not watched that yeah i saw the first season it was it was pretty good it was pretty interesting but is you know it's tom hardy you know being that 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 you know particular individual that that, that can take anything and do whatever and, and he was he was great um this movie reminded me of Daredevil, uh, not Daredevil, of Deadpool 2. More of the same. I didn't enjoy Darede uh, Daredevil, Deadpool 2. And I did not enjoy Venom 2. In my opinion, I don't know what people, I'm shocked that it hit these numbers. I'm completely shocked because this movie was whack. This movie was, <laughs> if you wanted to make me laugh, there was nothing in there that made me laugh. It, it, I was shrugging, rolling my eyes. 
I did not enjoy myself. There were people, oh, we had fun. Listen, I go to the movies to get be entertained and to sort of get whatever the director is trying to um, feed you. Like if he's trying to make you laugh, if he's trying to make you feel a certain way, if you don't feel those feelings, and if you don't get that, then the movie's gonna have a problem with that art, with that 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 person. With me, Venom Two was not funny. I didn't care. I mean, all you hear was Tom. Tom Hardy is voicing Venom, correct? Oh yeah. <laughs> Yo, my I, my ears were becoming numb. You know, Charlie Brown's mom or teacher? That's what it started to sound like. Yeah, yeah. It was just, I, I couldn't take it. If I would have been by myself, I would have walked out. Brian, I don't... Again, people, and there's some people out there that love this movie. Tell me... A lot of people. Is, yeah. A lot of people me, love this movie. I don't, I, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Tell me what you loved about this film. If you, I don't know if you have. Well, I'm the wrong know. person to ask. I, no, 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 no. I, I want. I, I'm asking the audience. Tell okay. me. Let me know in the comment section below what exactly did you love about this film. Explain to me. Did you laugh? Okay. Fine. You laughed. You you liked the action, but the story was just. But I, 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 I couldn't wait for it to be over. And it was only an hour and a half. Brian, your thoughts. Okay, so I'll go through. There are several things about this movie that I respect. And I think those might be at the heart of why this movie is resonating the way it is at the box office. So number one, it is 90 minutes do not underestimate how valuable that is, especially as people are coming off a pandemic, debating whether to go back to a movie theater. 90 minutes is not a commitment. And I do think that's really helping this film in a genre where most movies now are two and a half hours. And, you know, I mean, look, I'm psyched to see No Time to Die, but it's three hours long. It's, okay, like that's a, that's a lot. <laughs> Even for Bond, that's a lot. Okay. So I think that's one aspect of it. I think that this is not something that is connecting with me, but I do think to your point about the first film there, Tom Hardy is not mailing this in like to his credit, like he's amped up in, in this movie Be and, and he's amped up as himself as Eddie Brock mm -hmm. and he's way over the top. Mm -hmm. as Venom's voice yeah. in Tom Hardy's everlasting quest to manipulate his voice in every way possible. By the way, my idea for Venom 3 is the symbiote should inhabit Bane. So then, then you can have <laughs> Tom Hardy talk to Tom Hardy that way, which would be <laughs> blow people's mind. Anyway, so I think that's a part of it is that he is channeling something that is very comics accurate about Eddie Brock's relationship to the symbiote. It mm -hmm. just happens to be something I'm not enjoying seeing on the screen. But I do think for people who are fans of the character, it probably is their dream come true. Like they are seeing the embodiment of what the relationship between Venom and Eddie Brock is like in the comic. So I think, and I think Venom 2 Andy Serkis and Tom Hardy understood coming off Venom 1 where the symbiote is not really a part of him for most of the movie in the way that it is here, mm -hmm. that the number one thing they were going to do with this movie for 90 minutes was that. Because that's really the movie. Like, there's no story here. Yeah. Like, I don't know. My impression was like you're watching in like a 1950s sitcom. Like, it's like Abbott and Costello. It's like you know, Walter Matthau and Jack Lemon. Like, that's yeah. what you're watching. It just happens yeah. to be Tom Hardy and this CGI creature. Yeah. But, like, they're slapsticking around the apartment, having the fight, throwing the TV out. Like, it's just not my brand of comedy, but, like, yeah. it's a choice. And they yeah. were like, 
we're not we're not wading into the pool. We're just going right to the bottom of the deep end, and we're going to yeah. give it to you for ninety minutes, and you're either going to embrace it or you're not. You yeah. and I obviously did not. For a lot of people, <laughs> they did, and maybe, and I'll throw this out there as the third thing that maybe is really working for this character in this film is that you don't have that in the MCU and you don't have it in the DC extended universe anywhere. There is nothing like that yeah. to their credit. It is a different dynamic for a superhero movie and they're just cranking the volume on it. Mm -hmm. But I'm with you. It was 90 minutes, but I didn't really crack a smile the entire time. Again, I don't know if my, if I'm not, if my, if my, and in my old age, not that I'm super old, but as I get older, my humor is 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 vanishing from my from my you know from my mind. I, but I did not find one moment of that funny, or comical action. There was nothing extraordinary about it. Did you think there was enough action? This was sold as like nonstop action, but it didn't really play that way to me. Um, I didn't really get a sense of that it was going to be nonstop action. I, I never heard that, but there was sufficient ac um, action in it. I just didn't find it. I just didn't. I just. I just wasn't impressed by it. I was surprised they really only, you know, there was really only the one final showdown between Cletus Cassidy and Eddie Brock. Mm -hmm. I, most of these movies have a structure where the, the villain and the hero meet and you kind of expect Venom to get his butt kicked, you know, lose the first round and he kind of comes back and figures out. This one only had the one real showdown. Yeah. And, and, and then, so that felt a little bit... <laughs> That's where the felt the film felt a little short to me. Is like the there wasn't really a build to, to their that moment. Yeah. yeah, I think Venom, and I think they realized it. That's why I, I don't know if you want to get into the the end post credit scene because that's what people were waiting for. This is what people were hoping for. Outside of that, the movie again, and not to say that the end credit scene was phenomenal. It, it was, it was whatever, right? There's something happens. We can speculate on what that is. My, you know, I can, I'm gonna guess that this is the exact moment. Two, there's two scenarios. One, this is when Sylvie kills this dude. Uh, um, he who remains. Yeah. And something changes there. But it seems more likely is the spell that um, Doctor Strange uh, causes um, that incident to happen, where now Venom is a part of Tom Holland's Spider Man's universe, as is Green Goblin and somebody else. So that's going to be, uh, that's the only thing I'm looking forward to sort of understanding what occurred there. But I'm I'm quite certain that when that happens, I'm more interested in seeing the not the connection, but the the the, the confrontation he'll have with Spider Man and that dynamic and how that's going to be is if it's if it's going to be close to the comic, it's going to be a lot more serious. If it's too comical, I'm out. If it's more serious, because there's a genuine hatred for Spider-Man um, from Eddie Brock. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing what that dynamic is going to be. So I wanted to talk a little bit more about the in, in the movie, a couple of the performances here. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say my concerns about Woody Harrelson were realized, in my opinion. You know, great actors had a great career. Franchise films, stop calling this guy. Yeah. Between solo and this. Yeah. It's just, just it 
it felt mailed into me. It's like, it's just Woody Harrelson being a little bit sinister and a little bit twisted. Yeah. Carnage wasn't uber cool to me. It, yeah. it kind of felt, like I said, I was worried it was going to feel a little bit like a retread of Riot. And there is, you know, when they're fighting, I'm kind of like, yeah, I've sort of seen this, except with a gray symbiote instead of a red one. Yeah. And so I, I didn't, and they didn't really build, there weren't a ton of scenes with Cassidy and Brock. There were a few. Uh-huh. But they didn't really build that chemistry to where, like, the moment where he bites him uh-huh. is, like, a big payoff, you know? Yeah. And so I, I just wasn't in sync with Woody Harrelson at any point in this movie. I honestly felt kind of bad for Naomi Harris. I don't even know what she's doing in this movie. Like Shriek is sort of just there, launches a couple of, seems like almost there to just make Carnage mad at her and then winds up kind of turning her against him. And it just seemed like, look, I mean, I'm sure she got paid well for the role, but like, I, I just don't know what, she wasn't given much to do. Yeah. And then I felt Michelle Williams was actually good, but she just wasn't in the movie. I mean, she just yeah. was in the movie for like five minutes. I thought she was actually one of the better parts of the movie, but um, was not given anything to do. Because, as I said, they just boiled it down to Tom Hardy and Tom Hardy. Like That's what became 95% of this. I mean, Donnie Wahlberg. So now he's, is it shock? Is that his alter ego now? Like when he has the blue eye, like that felt totally thrown in there. Mm-hmm. So I was like, why, why is he here? He's not really doing anything. I mean, honestly, the only, the only other character. Ah, that who, dude. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. Like he's going to be that, now. That his, was Donnie Wahlberg? Pretty sure. Yeah. Like Marky Mark's brother. Yeah. Nah, that wasn't him. The short dude. The cop? Yeah, that wasn't yeah. him. I don't think right. it was him. No, nah, it wasn't him. He was he he was in a role I think in um he played Scarface in Broadway Empire. Boardwalk Empire, sorry. Oh yeah, maybe it's some okay, maybe it's a different guy. But anyway, yeah, 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 oh yeah. Stephen Graham, is that his name? Yes, yeah, I believe so. If it was okay. the cop with the the one, sorry, that... he looks a little bit like a wall. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> anyway, like I, the point being, like he gets impaled, and then sort of he turn he converts, and you're sort of like, what what is this? Like I don't even know why. Yeah, yeah, I I hear you. I hear you. I, I again, I did not love this movie. It wasn't funny. The action, it it was. You can put the action sequences with with Venom and Carnage and put them in the same movie with Riot and and uh, and Venom and is what's the difference there almost you know this this just wasn't it was no story it was it was it was horrible I mean, listen I didn't like the movie at all there's no one if you love the movie tell me why Tell me why. What was so awesome about this film? My son told me it was awesome. I was like, "Well, there you go." He, I said, like, "You're young." <laughs> what? What did and, he? And, what was his favorite part? I think the action sequences. Um, but I think you know what I noticed too in the crowd. I don't know if I don't know if your crowd was big because my joint, my my crowd was pretty big. I Mine was, was small. Mine was small, so man. No. Were were there? I noticed that there were a lot of young people there. Yes, there were. I mean, of the. 12 people in my theater, I'd probably say like six were not kid kids, but like yeah, teenagers. junior high, junior high to high school kids. Yeah. So I noticed that there was a lot of those. So that would be interesting, sort of a metric to, to find out if, if those were the, 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 the people that were going to go see that, that went to see this movie because no adult that I know that's seen this movie tells me that they love this movie. The other part of this is, as I say, I always judge these based on the rewatchability. And like, I don't find either Venom movie rewatchable. Like, I've seen both. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like, there's no one sequence where I'm like, if it's on TV, I have to see this again for five or 10 minutes. You know what I mean? Like, 
because I even feel, you know, like I the movie, some movies like I like more than you. Like I like Man of Steel a lot more than you. Like there's a bunch of scenes in Man of Steel for five minutes where I'm oh, like, yeah. if it's on TV, I want to see the Battle of Smallville or I want to see, you know, like, and it, there's just not a moment yet in the Venom franchise where I'm kind of like, I, I can watch this over and over again. It's a tough, yeah. it's like, I'm glad I've seen both. And like I said, I, I do respect the lane because it is different. Like I do respect that it it stands alone in its tone and its choices. It's just not my. It's just not mine. It just doesn't resonate with me. Which brings yeah. me to I do want to. So let's get back to that credit scene because I think there's a lot. Go- so I, the piece of the credit scene I did think was interesting was the little bit before the whatever it was that happened. Well, if anyone was I talking like to him, the, yeah. And I like the reference to the whole, like, the symbiotes all are in contact with each other. And I know, remember, 28, what do you say, 28 million? Like, basically, he, he knew what was going to happen uh-huh. because he's in contact with all these other symbiotes. He started to touch on the origins of the species. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. I was like, that's something this, had, this series had not tried to do before that moment. And I was like, I wonder if they're now going to go a little bit in that direction. So I that actually piqued my interest a little bit more. But then the thing I referenced to you, because you hadn't seen it yet, I was curious to see if it was going to be Spider-Man brought to Venom's world or if it was going to be Venom going to the MCU. And it clearly was Venom going to the MCU is what they chose. What do you... I mean, you mentioned the thing about the confrontation, but like based upon what they have put on screen, the way they've set this character up, how do you feel like that works alongside how they've set up the Tom Holland verse for Spider-Man? I'm curious to find out what that, what will be the dynamic between them because I don't, there's no, for me, I don't understand the reasoning behind the obsession for Tom Holland, Spider-Man. I don't get that. We just know the history. You know that right. these these two guys, you know, are you know enemies. That's all we know. But the way this came off is 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 if as if the Venom knows something already. I don't know. But that's what I'm curious to find out. What his what is Venom's obsession with Spider Man? Eddie Brock has no clue, obviously. Um, so that's, so that's what I, I, I don't, I, I'm trying to, I, I, I mean, I can't understand right now what's the reasoning. Obviously there's something there. What's that is what I would like to know. Yeah. Because in the comics, obviously part of the linkage is that Eddie Brock is also from New York. He's also worked for the daily bugle. Like there's all these, like they've crossed paths before they become enemies and rivals and stuff like that. And so this. There's been no setup of that, right? There's been no yeah, reference yeah. to it. So yeah, yeah. the thing that worries me, apart from the obvious of now people are like, well, Tom Hardy is definitely in No Way Home. And I'm like, is there anybody who's not in No Way Home? Like, what is it? I mean, <laughs> this movie going to be 12 hours long? Um, mm-hmm. Is, like I said, part of what I think is working for Venom, even though I don't love it, is that it's it has its own beats, like its own identity. But it's a not an MCU identity. I'm just struggling a little bit with like the Tom Hardy versus the symbiote rom- romance, romance, whatever you want to call it. That's they've got going in this film, which is the lifeblood of this franchise. I don't know how that fits in with the way Tom Holland interacts with his world in like Far From Home and Homecoming or even in the Avengers team-up films. Yeah. I'm struggling with how that crosses over in a way where you're kind of like, whoa, this is like dissonant. You know what I mean? Like you're watching these guys on screen and you're like, these are literally like two different movies in the same picture. That's yeah. what it worries me about where this is headed. Like is Marvel just going to let them keep doing this thing like alongside Tom Holland? But if they don't do that thing, then I don't think Venom is Venom anymore, at least the way they've created it. I think it the only way it works is to make Venom like 
much more evil. Um, something has to change because I, I it, it doesn't work for me currently in their interactions and how that's going to work. Because if you remember from the comics and more, more so from the animated series that I watched, the, that the Venom symbiote bonds with Peter Parker first. Mm -hmm. So we're not getting that. Yeah, I mean, so, even Spider-Man 3 kept that intact. Exactly. Even Spider-Man 3 kept that in fact. Yeah. So it'll be interesting how they make this work. I'm trying, I will, I want to know how the, how Venom becomes Spider-Man's biggest enemy. I want to see how that happens. So we'll see, man. But Venom was whack, yo. Do, do you believe so Kelly Marcel who co-wrote this movie with Tom Hardy has a quote and I sent it to you trying to say publicly that this end credit scene was done without any real input or discussion from the studios how is that possible you believe do you buy that at all Yeah, if Tom Hardy was involved, yeah. The reason being is because of his. Uh, he don't give a he 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 he, he, he <laughs> you know he does. I I don't think he plays nice with people telling him how it is and what he needs to do. I don't know if he has that sort of uh, respect for execs or whomever's in charge. I think Tom Hardy has taken it upon himself to m go at it and try to make this big, try to make the Spider-Verse big um, based on his previous comments on how they should approach this, right? They should really take this seriously and um, make this similar to what the MCU is. And I'm still under the impression that after No Way Home, I don't think Spider-Man is going to be a part of the MCU as much as it, it has been. Um, cause I think this is his last movie, right? Under the, the contract. Under the contract. Yeah. It does so, certainly seem like he's, it really, it really seems like the balance of Spider-Man is shifting back towards Sony. Oh, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So those tears aren't going to help this time, Tom. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know the story that he was crying. He didn't want to, he didn't want Sony and Marvel to go their separate ways. He wanted to continue, and they, I guess they obliged, but that's it. I think Sony is going to take the baton and try to build something huge. Uh, let's see what happens. And I think this is the beginning of it. All right. So we, since we do these for all the movies, uh, you, uh, out of five stars, two. what's your... Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you with two. Tom Hardy, the obvious MVP. My only other shout out that I want to give is to Mrs. Chen. <laughs> That's the only other performance I thought was ed that was the one I thought was entertaining. But yeah, anyway, yeah. yeah, no, it's basically a Tom Hardy vehicle. If you're a yeah. Tom Hardy fan, and you want to see him doing crazy Tom Hardy things. Yeah, you probably will like this yeah. movie. But yeah, yeah. So let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of this movie. Do you agree with us? Uh, where do you think this is all going? Let us know in the comment section below. I hit the like button. Next up, Hawkeye trailer. We spoke a little bit previously on this, and I'll just reiterate because you know I haven't seen it other than a couple of times that that um, I wanted to go see the trailer. But again, this speaks to um, some of the ideas that I felt needed to be in play in order for this theory or Hawkeye to a make sense and. B work and that is his run as a Ronin coming back to bite him and it seems that looks to be the to be the case um, I know Brian that you mentioned that this uh, and most people are saying that this is the most comic book accurate um live action storyline that they've taken from the actual comics 
and, and you said they want this is highly regarded um, um, storyline in the MCU, and um, I'm looking forward to seeing this, man. Your thoughts? Yeah, no. So I think Marvel. I've seen a little pattern here because we kind of went into our shows, and we, you know, we, you know, I had Loki. You had it higher than I did. I had Loki near the bottom. I had Hawkeye near the bottom, and. You know, part of my like common denominator with some of that was just sort of the I felt like the arcs of those characters had kind of been played out for the most part. Mm-hmm. And I was like, we don't need, you know, we don't need more of this. Mm-hmm. I think Marvel has found a way to subvert that a little bit. So obviously in Loki, the subversion was the TVA kind of the I'm gonna take Loki in a whole other direction and then give you something that you haven't seen before and then have Kang as like the you know Yes, the wrist is almost at the end of the at the end of the show. I think with Hawkeye, the grand experiment that so when you watch this trailer, if you don't know anything about the comics, I think you walk out of it feeling like, is this Iron Man three? Because it's like Christmas, it feels very Shane Blacky, like it's very cheeky. Mm-hmm. You're like, that's cool, whatever. But to me, it's the subtlety because this looks like. They took your idea, which is we have to make what happened in Endgame matter. And they put it back to the greatest run of Hawkeye comics that's ever been written, which was by Matt Fraction, I believe it was in 2012. So a little bit of context for this. So this comic became the best selling Marvel comic during its run. Hawkeye outsold wow. every other character in the catalog, which had never happened before. And Matt, I've read, if you could, there's a variety, it's variety. There's a feature article where he talks to Matt Fraction about how he came up with the idea and what he wanted the, sh- what he wanted the comic to be. Mm-hmm. And he said that it was a really simple question. He's like, what does this dude do when he's not avenging? That was literally the pitch. He went to, he went to Marvel and said, can I write a comic about what this dude does in his spare time? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that became this, sh- this run. And it introduced the characters that you see in the show. So Kate, so Kate Bishop is a major character in the comic. Lucky the pizza dog, who's pictured in the trailer. Um, Echo, uh, the deaf, first deaf super, superhero, is is in is in the comic run. And it just it sold like wildfire. It gained critical acclaim. There was originality in the comics, which I believe you're going to see in the show. There's a couple of things I, I wanted to talk about, but in the trailer. The giveaways that they don't tell you are one, the font of at the end is the font from the comic. It literally is the same font. Okay. Hawk, Jeremy Renner has the blonde short hair, which is what Hawkeye had in that run. Mm-hmm. He the tracksuit mafia is pictured, the dog is pictured. There's an interesting shot of him based if there's a number of shots in this trailer where he is clearly been beaten up like he's got ice packs he's sitting in the chair with like a black eye like that was something that became notorious in these comics was that hawkeye would really take a lot of punishment almost like john mcclain like in a diehard movie he would just get beaten up over and over again they would sort of kind of survive through and so i think this is something i've always wanted to see which is what would happen if instead of adapting comics we just took a great comic run and put it on the screen in a serial show and what would happen and so that's got me really interested, uh, you know, as to what this, what this could look like. And, and, and among the features that I think you're going to see, I believe you're going to see an episode that has no sound. Because in the comics, there's an issue which is told from the point of view of Echo. An entirely, so imagine a printed comic that is entirely from the perspective of a deaf character. Mm-hmm. I would bet that happens in this show now there's an episode that has almost no sound there's also an episode told from the point of view of the dog i would not <laughs> or an issue i would not be surprised if there is lucky what i'm just saying these were things that fraction used mm-hmm. to keep it fresh and people mm-hmm. bought it up i would not be surprised if you see that in the show and that's got me really really interested as to what this looks like so pretty psyched i'm actually pretty i'm now i'm now like ready for this show like ready yeah. to see it I'm interested in seeing because there's rumors that Vincent D'Onofrio may show up. In yes. This. And then there's um, that. And Florence Pugh, given yeah, what we saw in yeah, Black Widow, yeah, exactly. we're exactly. ready. Like, we're ready yeah. for her. There's a lot of things to look forward to in this uh, this show. Um, 
is there a rumor also that Charlie Ka- well, not Daredevil is going to show up in this? Uh, I don't think it's in this. this. It's more, well, if you want to talk about the next topic, it's more the character from this is then going to get ported. And that's where. Yo, Daredevil's a player, man. He had, he, Echo fell in love with him. Black Widows had a relationship with him. Um, what's her name? Killa, um, Electra. Yeah. He's a, he's a, he's, he, Daredevil's the man. Um, <laughs> so we're excited for Hawkeye um, and what it may lead to um, and how they're going to do this show. Um, if you're um, correct in that they're directly adapting this from the comics, there's going to be a lot of interesting things to sort of pay attention to and, and, and watch. So I, I'm looking forward to it. Now, this comes on the on on the the rumor that yeah, Daredevil that. Disney is working on a Daredevil season four, supposedly. It's not a season four, but they're looking to bring back everyone. I'm hoping they bring back Ben Ben Eric. He shouldn't have died in that first season. <laughs> Agreed. Um, Agreed. But um, again, I've said this before. Kevin Feige, I'm certain, is one of those fans who enjoyed what Netflix did over there. What they, what they were able to accomplish with the character at Daredevil, I think was, for me, must-see TV. Especially that season three. And I love season two, especially with John Bernthal's um, portrayal of the Punisher. And that roof, I keep, I still watch it to this day. The rooftop conversation that he had, that was taken straight from the comics. Yep. Um, that he had with Daredevil. Those those things were golden for me. And Kevin Feige, I think, respected what they did there and why um, fix something that ain't broke. Right? I'm pretty sure Karen Page, I, I don't know the, the, the actress, I'm pretty sure she's happy about it if they bring her back because she hasn't done anything since that. And I saw her in the interview. She was like bawling because she hasn't gotten a call back for, for other stuff. So I, I'm hoping that they bring her back. But yeah, do you see this going that route, Brian, where they're bringing back the Daredevil people um, and, and, and continuing on with that story of the Daredevil? So the rumor, the rumor it took form, which I thought was really interesting, was that it's actually in the Echo series right so we have the confirmation that um the, the actress plays echo i think a lot well, i can't remember exactly what her name is apologies but so it's a it's the echo series but now rumored to include charlie cox vincent d'onofrio um eldon henson who plays foggy deborah wall who plays karen page um missing one other but it's the top five build actors from daredevil are all reportedly signed for this series which is still then supposedly an echo centric series but mm-hmm. now in the world of these characters and then it becomes quasi daredevil season four yeah which i think disney is going to be careful not to call it daredevil season four only because i do feel like tonally that commits you to the world of the Netflix Daredevil, which was obviously very R-rated. And I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see, is, is Disney willing to go back there? Because the character really could use that. Yeah. You know, you mentioned that the Ben Urich, you know, death, which I agree, although it was not a pointless death because the way it was yeah. done with what D'Onofrio did to him was that moment where you're like, this guy is <laughs> out of control. <laughs> like when he lets it loose, I'm like, yeah, he is yeah. evil beyond evil. Yeah, yeah. So look, I mean, awesome. I mean, if this is going to happen, awesome. And if these guys are going to start popping up in No Way Home and Hawkeye just to give you like a little appetizer for what's coming. Yeah, fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, and like I said earlier, like I th- like we've had all these, the, the leads have been popping up. These guys are all popping up saying we're ready to go. So as we said, something is happening. I think November 12th is the Disney Plus day. I have to think 
we will get an announcement about some or all of these characters that might be reappearing. That would be interesting. I still don't, I, but I still don't know how you do the Punisher on Disney Plus if it's not rated R. I still don't get it. They, there's no way it's not going to be rated R. I just don't know where it's going to be. I think you're probably right that Hulu is where this is headed in the end, as, I hope as so. opposed to Disney Plus. But I hope so. Uh, Cox, Alaqua Cox is her name. Alaqua Cox. Sorry, yeah. For, I, I was like, I, th- I was going to say Cox, and I'm like, wait, Charlie is also Cox. I'm like, no, it is Alaqua Cox. <laughs> okay, yeah. So that's the. Yeah. yeah so let's see, man. If um, we hopefully we do get those announcements, that would be fantastic. If we got those uh, confirmations that Daredevil, Charlie Cox is Daredevil is going to be showing up on a, on on the shows, and he's going to have his own Disney Plus show. Let's see. I think it's probably a little bit too early for that, maybe, because they don't want to spill the beans with his uh, um, inclusion in No Way Home, if that is. But I mean, not if. Uh, I think we. Yes and no, though. I mean, like, if you're Disney, though, why do you know the first ever Disney Plus day is going to have big news? Like, I. They're not scheduling a separate event devoted specifically to the service without dropping major news and footage. There's no chance. Mm-hmm. We'll see. I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. It'll be. Let's see. I, I'm not going to say anymore. I, I, I'm going to wait and see. When is this again? November 12th. So 12 days November before. 12th. I think Hawkeye comes out November 24th. Obviously, No Way Home is December 17th, so... And Eternals is November... Uh, 4th, I believe. Okay. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think about this Daredevil rumor. Do you think it's going to happen? Let us know. Um, next up, Joker 2 and the possibilities of this happening. I don't think Joaquin Phoenix is going to sign up for another one. And this touches on a previous conversation that we had. You know, you got away, and not to say that this movie was bad. It wasn't at all. It was great. It's fantastic. I, I actually finally saw it. I, would I watch it again? No, nah, I don't have a reason to watch it's it. It's a tough again. watch, right? Yeah. The, my thing is, how long can you keep doing this without the the, the main man? How, how? What other stories? Can you, we already know he's crazy. He's a killer. What else can you tell? We already seen his life and how he's been. How he was. We just gonna see a movie about him just doing crazy stuff and killing. What is it that we're gonna get from this? And nobody's there to stop him. That's that's the question for me. Joaquin Phoenix and, and, and he's a he's a interesting person. He's a different and, cat. Yeah, and I don't see him coming back. Uh, he hasn't done a sequel, right? Has he? I don't think he's Not done a sequel. That I'm aware of. I, I believe I read that somewhere that he hasn't done a sequel. No, I, not that I'm aware of. No, I don't think he's the type of guy that he's a, in it for the money. No. I think he's in it for the art. And I think he wants to just continue to play different characters. And I've always, I, ever since I saw him in Gladiator, I thought this, this guy was amazing. I don't think and, he's in the sequel to that. You heard they're make, yeah, finally making that, right? Yeah, yeah, you know, he, he died. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. So? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I don't understand that. That's. I hope they don't go that route because they had their chance to continue that. But Maximus, I don't know what what sequel to. I don't get it. Do you know? So I heard, <laughs> I heard the original script treatment for Gladiator Two was Maximus in his like afterlife becomes a time traveling hero. This is not a joke would like go to the future and the past he would pop up and like save the day in various times of civilization if it's that 
and they greenlit 200 million bucks. I'm like, they might as well just walk to the incinerator and just light it on fire. <laughs> Nobody is going to go see that. What? That's why it's taking so long. This was a Best it, Picture yeah. Award winner, and that's your idea for Gladiator 2? We should have one day a discussion about sequels and should they should they do it? Should they do sequels? Look at look at Coming to America too. Look at Dumber Dumber too. Look at uh, Blade Runner. There's so many movies that they do sequels to, and it take a long time to do it. It doesn't work, in my opinion. You know, um, the sequel. I mean, if they're gonna do it and have it make any sense, it has to be his son, or not his son, um, Lucilla's son, the boy. In Gladiator One, it has to be his. Yeah, story. yeah, that's exactly. the character. Yeah, exactly. Russell Crowe leave those guys out of it because obviously they're dead. So what? Yeah. What's the point? Do you see Todd Phillips and Joaquin Phoenix actually doing this? Coming back for a second? I mean, I made a billion well, dollars, right? But well, I've said. I mean, Todd Phillips will definitely do it because he did it with Hangover Two and Three. So you can wave the bag big enough that he will do it. <laughs> okay, so I, I, he would definitely do it. Joaquin Phoenix is definitely, and we talked about this before. That I don't think there's any amount of money that's going to guarantee his participation. Um, you know, the comments he made recently where he was on a podcast, he said the politically correct thing, which is kind of like, yeah, you know, there's probably other things we could explore here. But that didn't sound like a guy that was, you know, we just talked about the Marvel uh, uh, Netflix character. These people are like, itching like they're, they're in the starters gate like the horse of the kentucky derby they just want to be let out so they can play these guys again i don't get that from joaquin phoenix i think he feels yeah. like look i went to play this part to win an oscar and to explore what i can do with the joker which has been famously played before and he did it i think yeah. if you asked him mission accomplished he did everything he wanted yeah. to do yeah. with this character and to your point you know there's only so many al capone movies you can make without elliot ness like, yeah, you know, like, do we need to? So then at some point, if you're going to keep making Joker movies, he almost has to transform into like a twisted version of Batman and fight the penguin and fight the scarecrow, right? Like, that's what it becomes. And you're like, at that point, you're like, why am I not just watching a Batman movie doing this? <laughs> yeah. I mean, if I was Warner Brothers, I would approach Todd Phillips with another character. I would try, hey, let's try Mr. Freeze. Can we do something with Mr. Freeze? Do you find something compelling and, 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 and interesting as the Joker? Do a Mr. Freeze. So I, I think that would be something I would want to watch. To do Batman's role gallery and how they became who they are. Whatever. But play with that rather than do sequels. Because how long can you keep doing these films or, or give, give, give a part twos of, of, a, of characters if you already did the first one? You're going to continue doing the second one without Batman? It just doesn't make, it just doesn't work for me. And I'm pretty sure for a lot of others as well. So, what if, now let me throw this at you though. And I don't know if Joaquin Phoenix would ever do this. What if the Matt Reeves universe takes off the way that we think it does and he establishes the Rogues Gallery? And they're able to get Joaquin Phoenix to get, to not necessarily anchor a film, but he's part of the rogues. He's part of the villains ensemble in Matt Reeves' universe. Do you want, having seen the movie now, do you want him as the Joker in that universe, or would you rather see Matt Reeves take kind of give you his take and his casting of the Joker? I think I'd rather see Matt Reeves. Okay. But I wouldn't be mad if Joaquin Phoenix came and was inspired to do the role again, you know, and uh, be a part of what Matt Reeves is doing. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't be mad at it, but I'd rather see what Matt Reeves is going to do because so far what he's shown us with every character in that film as something new and fresh and, and, and interesting, I want to see what what he, what he can do with the Joker. Because I don't know what you thought. My my number one takeaway from the Joker movie was that Joaquin is so consuming 
of the screen. Like when he is on the screen, it, there is no room for anyone, anyone else, else, including Batman. And weirdly, as good as Heath Ledger was, when he and Batman are in the interrogation scene, there is room for both of them. Like yeah. there's a tension that like works with the two of them. And that, that's my one thing is Joaquin is so powerful that if you put him opposite Pattinson, who is a very quality actor, I don't know. He might blow him off the screen in a way that like almost feels not quite like the right dynamic. Because like the Joker movie is so Joker. It is yeah. him, yeah. you know, to the max. But again, we don't know what we'll see with Bat um, Pattinson's Batman in this. No, movie. we don't. That's fair. So it, it, we might see a performance where those two guys can be in the same room and we'll just see the back and forth and not one taking over the other. So it is, it is a very interesting conversation and, and the studio is going to try though, man, they are going to oh, try hard with the amount of oh, money yeah. this movie made. They are going to, they'll be like, you want 50 million. You want, you want 10% of the growth. I mean, they're going to be throwing numbers at him. Like we haven't seen before. Again, I said it before and I'll say it again. For me, the Batman will possibly be the beginning of something because if it does what I think it'll do, Warner Brothers is just want, is going to want to continue on in that on that road that Matt Reeves will begin. So let's see, man. Let's see. Let us know in the comment section below whether you think Joaquin Phoenix will come back for Joker two and if are you interested? Do you in want? Scene? Yeah. Do you want Joker two? Like as good as Joker one was, do you want more? Or do you want another two and a half hours of that? Nah. Um, next up, Affleck is happy about his uh, participation in The Flash and so obviously everybody knows that he's going to be in The Flash and he's going to be in Michael Keaton and stuff um, and he's, he's letting it be known that you know he enjoyed himself comparing to his prior part um, part uh, in Justice League and how that experience went. It's obvious to me and to everyone that that Justice League movie doesn't have the same sort of tension as the Batman's tension in that film, right? This one is more less enjoyable than than what Matt Reeves is doing over there at the Batman. Um, I'm pretty sure it's a subject matter that those guys don't want to talk to, uh, talk about. Um, they, they, they'll always say their, their sly remarks just to to let everybody know that it was it wasn't a good experience. And this is just Ben Affleck doing that. Um, but uh, Brian, what do you think? Why? Well, I- he didn't have to say what he said. I think yeah. that's the number one takeaway. Like he, but that he says a him. lot that he says it. That says a lot. Well, I think it ties together. He's had an in, he had a, a strange relationship with the Snyder Cut. I felt like in the sense that before it was greenlit, he was one of the stars that tweeted in solidarity, supporting this movie getting made. When it came time for like the unveiling and the promotion, like obviously we know the studio didn't really back Zach on that that much, which wasn't really great, but he was totally radio silent. Like everyone else kind of at least through, you know, Cavill was there when they unveiled the placard on the, on the, was it Vivo is that the, or the service that he uses, you know, when they showed everyone they were going to do it. Mm-hmm. And then Cavill tweeted after it came out, like, what a movie it is. And then, like, you know, Ray Fisher obviously stumped for the movie pretty hard. You know, Gal Gadot, Jason Momoa, a little less, um, a little less out there, but they didn't offer it kind of like a, hey, we're glad this happened. Congratulations to Zach. Oh, Affleck yeah. was MIA. He didn't say anything. And then this happens. He gives the interview and he's like, oh, it's so great to be back playing Batman. He's like, 
and then he throws the shade he's like he gets he's like hey i'm the cape crusader the cape leaves shade and he's like <laughs> you know i it just i didn't it wasn't enjoyable the last time and i'm like yeah, he didn't yeah, have yeah. to say that man he did not have to throw yeah. that in there yeah and it just was he had to let people know that like it, it, it wasn't it, was, a good it wasn't good man it wasn't it wasn't fun <laughs> but you know uh, hey when something was i guess the experience was that bad that they just can't let people forget that whether you like the bat um, his version of the batman or not you know and if for those people who probably didn't like it Although there's a lot of people thought that Ben Affleck was a great Batman. But I feel like he's saying what he's saying, not to say that this will be a better performance, but that it, you'll see the difference. So I'm interested in seeing, I'm interested in seeing that difference uh, in, in this version of Batman. I don't know how long he's going to be in the film. Um, so that'll be interesting. Um, but yeah. Ben Affleck's uh, all about, he's all about running it back these days. Yeah. Right? J-Lo, yeah. Batman, he's, he's getting, <laughs> getting catharsis with all of his past right now. That's, that's what's going on. Working so. with Matt Damon again. <laughs> there you go. I'm actually excited for that movie. Yeah. Last that that movie good. looks really, pretty good. Yeah. That has yeah. Some, some major actors in there. Yeah. Um, what did you think, um, moving on and before we sign off, I just wanted to find out what did you think about, um, Peacemaker, that little clip, um, for the, the show? Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's kind of about what I expected tonally, I guess. Right. You know, I kind of, um, I'll watch it. I mean, I'm, I'm ready to see it. I'm, I'm generally, I'm generally pro Cena when it comes to like his sort of persona. So no, I think, mm -hmm. what did you, I mean, I thought the, the way that, Gunn is teasing this is about what I would have expected for this show. So it does look like he's going to be wearing this helmet a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, I felt the same. I, it felt like a James Gunn sort of um, dialogue, right? Um, I, I found it. I found it a little bit amusing in some of the things that, that was being said. Let's see. It, 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 my whole thing is, if it gets too much, it stops being funny. You know, so that's oh, yeah. what, that's that's my concern, man. Um, and and this is going to be more, right? That's the the da the danger for James Gunn is that his movies are too you know two hours and change. So you kind of get your you get your hits with James Gunn, and then you kind of take a break with a series, you know, if it's eight, 10 parts, like that's a lot longer to sustain that momentum. So, yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see, but he also dropped, I don't know where we're going to go with this working on another DC project. Now everyone's like, and the way he said it makes you almost wonder, is it not suicide squad too? Is it something else? I hope it's something else. The suit suicide. The further we go, and I know the timing wasn't ideal, the further we go and you see the box office numbers, I don't see how anyone can go back to Suicide Squad and tell me that it was the pandemic. Nah, it wasn't the pandemic. Yeah. It was rated R. It was super violent. And it had been, it was too, too soon after the air one. That's... Yeah, and it's just... I just, I just don't see them. I mean, they didn't make any money. Why take the risk? Why take on the risk to to make another film like that? And no pandemic now. You want to throw money at it to see if we can redeem ourselves? Nah. You know what I'm saying? That's 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 just too much risk there. For you know, I'd rather do a different, whatever it, it may be. Hopefully, it's, it's something exciting. Um, Any chance it's... I, I don't think it's Superman, but it, it was at least in the back of my mind, given that his first conversation with DC was about Superman. And obviously, we know that this studio is not afraid to have 12 Superman up on screen at the same time. So, I don't know. It's just, it just the way he said it, in my mind, I was like, it had to be something different. 
I just was trying to wrap my head around what that could be. I don't, I, yeah, I don't know how different he can be, man, with another character. You know what I'm saying? I agree with you. I mean, Suicide Squad is tailor made for James Gunn in the same way that Guardians was. Uh, with, but Guardians, he was subdued. Yeah, and you this he was saying? turned up. Yeah, no, this one he was unleashed. He was unshackled. So I don't know what character. I don't know. Maybe Dark. Uh, 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 Justice League Dark. Oh, that's not a bad idea. Maybe. Justice League Dark. Constantine. Maybe that's maybe the direct. It's part of Again, Justice League Dark. Though? Oh yeah, yeah, Constantine. But you know, the, the, yeah. I mean, that sounds a little bit more of the route that I think he would take because. Because Justice League is a little bit more, a little bit more serious in tone, I think. Yeah. Because uh, you can't. Not even, listen. Not even Justice League Unlimited was funny. It had its moment, but it was a serious show. Yeah. Some serious things went down. But yeah, that's our show for today. Remember, please hit that like and subscribe button, that notification bell, share it with your friends. Brian, any last words? No, I think hopefully gonna see no time to die tomorrow night. I'm pretty stoked about that. So you see it tomorrow be, night? That's my plan. Yeah. Did you buy your tickets already? No, but like I said, around me there's no competition. Ah, that's right. That's <laughs> I don't right. have to do that. Yeah, where you are, you have to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Same seat, sir. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> uh, is that New York Comic Con is happening, right? It's still happening. Is I, it? I haven't checked the I, dates, but I yeah. saw somebody that I know that he has a booth, but I haven't heard any big news surrounding it or any excitement around it. I don't know. Let's see. Maybe I'll stop by. I don't know. Maybe we'll see. But yeah, uh, thank you once again for joining us on the Jim Report, and we'll see you next time. I'm <laughs> sorry.